Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have had in our possession for like two years, it may have been five years, it's something like that, this Williams Student Prince pinball machine. I, I particularly like this vintage of Williams because they have the pointy people. I just think it's cool, right? But anyway, we picked this up quite a while back, pretty inexpensively. I believe, although don't quote me on this, that we got it whenever we got that hit and run game. If you remember that one, we had a baseball game uh, that we worked on for, I think, Christmas or New Year's last year. Uh, we put up those videos. That was a um, like a baseball EM that Williams made. I think we got this with that game. So it, whenever we got it, it was in pretty poor condition. It's kind of complete, but uh, the, the side art was all missing. And so we did a video where we repainted the cabinet just a two-tone color that looks kind of groovy. But it doesn't have the, uh, the art that was on it, right? Um, ultimately, this thing's not going to be worth a bunch of money. So we didn't spend a ton of time painting it and re-stenciling it and all of that. The game just doesn't... Um, it isn't going to be worth the effort that it would take to do that, in my opinion, financially. And I'm happy with it like this. We did another video where we, we kind of worked through some of the electronics, and then we did one where we fixed this play field. The play field was completely destroyed. About half of the paint was missing, so I repainted the entire play field. Um, you can tell if you look at the lettering, because that's always my weak point. I'm not great with the lettering and the numbering. But we repainted everything, all of this. If you see it, it's been repainted. So we did a whole video on that. If you didn't see that, check it out. But now we need to try to get the thing to work. So that's what we're going to do on today's video. Hopefully we'll finish it up on this video. So if you didn't see the two previous videos, go back and see them. Uh, first thing I want to show you is all of the crazy stuff that they did underneath the play field. So I'm going to lift up the play field and show you what's going on under there. We already did a lot of the electronics on the mech board in the bottom. But we need to work under the play field and in the back box. So let's pop it open. Okay, so this is what it looks like underneath. Typical EM uh, play field, just all kinds of stuff packed under there. Lots of wiring, lots of relays, and a little, uh, you know, relay bank here. Uh, I found a couple things that are interesting. Now, if you watched the previous videos, one of the things is All of the coils have been hacked with these little cards with diodes on them. I guess because they're trying to convert the coils to use DC power instead of AC power, which theoretically makes them stronger. I don't really care much about making them stronger. I want it to be kind of how it originally was, so I'm taking all that crap off. Some of them they didn't, like this score reel here in the middle. Um, but this thing here was completely screwed up. And you see this one is all burnt up. Look at that. So it's like all of this with the electrical tape, this is hacks that somebody else did. I didn't do any of this crap. Okay. So we're definitely getting rid of all of that. And so I'm just going to remove those and attach the wires directly to the coil like they're supposed to be. Um, and we'll replace this coil, obviously. But let me show you something else very interesting that I found. Are you ready for this? You're going to love this one. Number one bumper relay. Number two bumper relay. Now usually the way these work is if you hit the pop bumper, this relay it pulls this relay in, which scores the points and pulls in the, uh, the actual coil on the pop bumper. Okay? And then once the pop bumper pulls in, pop bumper, <laughs> rubber baby buggy bumpers. Uh, once it pulls in, it opens up another switch, which kills the pop bumper relay. All right. Well, look at this one. There is a screw perfectly stuck in the relay. Now this is not too big of a deal. You actually see this a lot. A little screw will fall down and land between a couple blades of the relays, right? So 
it's typical to find it in the bottom of the cabinet. That's why we always clean out the bottom of the cabinet whenever we first get the games, because all kinds of stuff falls down there. As a matter of fact, there's something down there right now, even after I cleaned it out. I don't even know where the hell that came from. So a diode has somehow fallen into the bottom of the cabinet. There shouldn't even be any diodes in this game. All right? So you got to clean all this stuff up. Because what happens is they connect a couple things together that it shouldn't, right? So look at this one. That's what you call welded. So it has welded itself <laughs> between those two switches. So you don't see them welded too often. But uh, that could have been what burn up that coil. As a matter of fact, it'd be interesting to know. Let's see here. Let's see if I can figure it out. The wire to that coil is orange. The wire to that coil is orange. The wire to this coil is black and white. And the wire to that coil is gray. So that one's orange. Is that, I guess that one's orange too. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, so the black and white is that one. See how it's connected to the end switch there? And on this side the end switch is connected to an orange wire, which may be that one. Wouldn't that make sense? I don't know. It's, can we tell on the plate field? <sighs> okay. And then there's a gray wire, which is the second one in. And then uh, if that's orange, maybe it's that second one in. I don't know. Can't really tell. But it could it could be that's the reason that coils burn up. The freaking screw fell on it and burned it all up. Locked it on and then it overheated. All right, so we got to work on that. But I'm going through. I'm going to unsolder all of these connections on these little cards and put the crap back the way it's supposed to be. There's not really that many of them. One, two, three. Of course, they're on the flippers. Yay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think there's eight of them. But no big deal. We'll put it back. They didn't do it to the relay reset. That's interesting. I guess kickers, flippers, and pop bumpers. All right, so inside the cabinet, we've got a, a smoky hold coil, lock coil, lock relay there that uh, we need to uh, swap out. It's buzzing a little bit, still working fine. I want to show you something about transformers too, just to make the video longer, I guess. <laughs> um, Sometimes your transformer will buzz. If it's doing that, I've had people email about this. There's two ways you can fix it if the transformer is buzzing. There's all these metal plates here. If you look, it's a bunch of little plates. What happens is they get loose. If you look, see that crack right there? They get loose and it actually vibrates a little bit as the juice runs through them. Look, folks, I call it juice. You'll be all right. As it transforms, it vibrates a little bit. So it will actually buzz from the vibrations. So if you tighten up these lugs on the end, a lot of times that will quiet down a transformer. The noise you're hearing right now, though, is the lock relay. But watch if I mess with this a little bit. Well, it was doing it earlier, but it's quiet now. Another thing you can do if you have a transformer that's noisy you may not want to do this. If tightening up the lugs doesn't um, quiet it down, sometimes hitting it with a hammer will quiet it down. 
it'll bend something just right and it'll stop buzzing. So, something to think about. <laughs> Alright, so I have cleaned all of the switches and everything on the bottom of this thing. All of these little trip switches. Which are the one, two, three, four, five. I tripped two and four, which turns off the light at the top, turns on the light at the bottom, and turns on all the pop bumpers. So I did that to make sure that the pop bumper lights are working. I took this cool little score reel that's right in the middle of the play field and cleaned it up, cleaned off, cleaned the uh, little uh, PCB there that the uh, little whatever's go on. Bleh, 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 bleh. The little horseshoe contact goes on. Uh, cleaned the relays, rewired every one of these freaking pop bumpers. I probably shouldn't show that too close. The soldering's not perfect, you know, but it's pretty good. Um, this one was missing one, so I swapped in a new coil for that. We'll see how well that works. Uh, what else did we do? Oh, the flippers. That's right. That's correct. The flippers. There were two new flipper coils in the bottom. So I got them in. It was a little tricky figuring out how the stuff wires. Luckily, it's in the schematics, so I was able to suss it out. Um, I believe that's correct. I looked it all up on the schematics. I think we've got that right. These are the moving flippers. They called them zipper flippers on the Bally's. But on the Williams games, they called them, I think, moving flippers. Because they couldn't say zipper flipper. They'd get sued. But a uh, neat little concoction there. It moves the flippers from where they normally are closer together and even changes the angle of them and everything else. Just amazing little invention. But you'll see that as we play it. So I think everything on the bottom of the play field is fine. There was a switch broken here as well. I replaced the switch that was missing, the switch blade. Um, and that was pretty much it. Just getting all those little cardboard things off was the biggest deal. But we don't know if any of the stuff works. We'll have to play it to test it. But before we play it, we have to work in the back box. There's also something weird going on with this switch over here in the shooter lane. We might have to replace that. But So we've got shooter lane switch issue. We've got lock relay issue. But they're technically kind of working. So I want to pull this thing out. Let's look in the back box. I need to work through all of that stuff. You know, working on these score reels is my bane, too. I really don't like it. Have I mentioned that on this video yet? So here's what we've got back here. It's actually in pretty good shape. Everything looks pretty clean and complete. Um, I mean, clean as in not hacked up. But it's got dust all over it. So there are 16 score reels. Big old four-player game. Um... There was a little spider here that they are calling the match unit. Hmm, interesting. Pretty complex for a match unit. Right, here's the little credit wheel. They're calling the replay unit on Williams. And then this stepper down here, maybe the player unit? Player unit. Um, so all three of those we'll have to d disassemble, clean, and put back together. Clean the 16 score reels. And then we have one point relay, 10 point relay, 100 point relay. Now, there isn't a thousand point relay. You might say, why not? Because they can score a thousand points. But why not is because it doesn't, um, nothing on the play field scores a thousand points. So, see the thousand to two thousand unit? So the only way to score a thousand points is to score a bunch of 100 points. So you only need a hundred point relay. Simple, simple as that, folks. Um, and then uh, these two are reset relays for the score reels. So whenever the game resets, uh, those will go clackety clack, clackety clack, clackety clack, and make all of those reset to zero. Now you may notice they are all at zero. So at some point it reset just fine. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do um, is, I guess, start on this player unit. So we're going to clean the switch here. See how that blade's bent? It probably shouldn't be like that. 
basically when it gets back to zero that should probably open but we'll check it all out that's probably been out of shape uh, and we need to take this wheel off of here so that we can clean the rivets and everything on the um, the disc there and make sure everything is making good contact come on come on people come on now look come on now what kind of come on now people it goes all the way back it's going all the way there's a little thing in there it's home that's home people come come on if it's at home and there's a switch it, it does come, come on now come, come on people if there's a switch it's supposed to oh. they wouldn't put a switch to just stay come, come on now if there's a switch it's supposed to open people why would they put a switch that doesn't open obviously that's bent you don't have to this you don't even need to skim the the, the, the the paperwork, you don't even need the paperwork. Obviously, that's supposed to... Come on, people. Oh, God, I'm down to the last one. Oh, man, I've been working through... Oh, I hate doing I hate doing these score reels. Oh, it makes me... It makes me sound like a whiner. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to sound like some of those people in the comment section that... I always want I'll start saying things like LEDs would really make it pop. Uh, uh. All right, so I got that adjusted right, cleaned it up. It seems to move right. I uh, got this. These switches cleaned, working. It moved fine. Took this apart, cleaned it up. You've seen me do all this a thousand times. The match unit, cleaned it up. cleaned all 16 score reels there were a couple that had broken wires where they they just pop right off of the um, the switch so I put those back got everything adjusted rebuilt seems to be snappy and then I left every one of them not on zero so let's see if it's going to reset all of them this will basically tell us which ones of them um, are still screwed up so I can focus on which ones still need a little bit of work one two three four we have five that are tripping All right, I found a bunch of switches that weren't quite right on those five. Let's see if it will do it better this time. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. It also reset the uh, the two relays that weren't on. Two and four had been tripped, or it did that at some point. Uh, this one in the middle is interesting. I don't know what how that works yet. That'll be cool to see. But it looks like we've got all of our... Uh, score reels resetting. I think the next thing we're going to do is tackle this back box. The game seems to be starting. It didn't kick the ball out, but that's just because there's no ball in it. So the out hole relay is not in, so it won't kick the ball out if there's none there. Um, I'm going to take that back glass off. we got to touch up some of that paint, especially at the bottom there. <laughs> Alright, so I have sprayed triple thick over the parts of the back glass that are flaking you don't necessarily have to do it all you just want to get it's mainly the translucent areas the the the, the parts that let light shine through um and down at the bottom it will be particularly bad uh, it appears that that's because people spray cleaner on the glass and then it comes down stays in this channel underneath it and then wicks up into the paint um so we think that's why it's worse on the bottom uh, always um, but I've clear I've cleared over all of this. We're using this stuff triple thick crystal clear glaze It's called triple thick because it really is triple thick. This is for like pottery and stuff Gives a real nice finish to pottery 
but it works perfect for what we're doing. So basically you, you spray it and that basically locks all of the flaking paint down. It won't get any worse. It'll keep it right where it is. And then you can just do a little uh, craft project and touch the paint up on the back and try to paint in some of the missing artwork. This one's not too crazy bad. Obviously the bottom's screwed up, but we've had much, much, much worse. So we'll let that dry. While we're doing it, I'm going to replace all of these light bulbs. If you need any of that triple thick or you just want to see some of the stuff that we use in our machines, uh, go to lionsarcade.com. There's a link down below every video. If you go to our website, there is a parts page at the top. Uh, if you click on that parts page, it'll show you just stuff like this. And there are links to uh, things on Amazon. If you follow any of those links to Amazon, if you buy anything on there, like you might buy a can of spray paint or you might buy a Pac-Man machine, Anything you buy, it gives us a tip for sending you. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll start swapping out light bulbs. And uh, we'll see if we can give it a little action here in the middle. Okay, so we're still waiting on our clear coat to dry on the back glass. But I've got all new bulbs in. And then these ones with the little cupped holes as opposed to these. They did that so that you could put the bulbs with a globe on it which uh, is what a 455 bulb has. It has a little globe. So that one wouldn't fit in that one too well. So they kind of show you where those bulbs are supposed to go, and those uh, the 455s that they put in them blink. So uh, it just makes the whole back glass look better because it's everything's... You get a little bit of action going on. It's almost like a little attract mode. Very cool. Okay, so we got all new bulbs. Everything's cool. Um... I'm still waiting on paint to dry. I'm going to play it a little bit just by hand and see if any of the score reels aren't scoring. So uh, I'll start a four-player game and just check all four players. Make sure the 10 points is working, the 100 points is working, the thousand, uh, the 1, the 10, the 100, and then that they all roll over to their next uh, reel. All right, so the clear has dried, and all of the damage is kind of centered around this area. So I took a black uh, acrylic paint pen and on the back I drew in the missing black lines part of her arm part of his leg just the spots where it had cracked and disappeared so that kind of got the figures back uh, and now I'm going to try to touch up the paint the problem with this is going to be light will shine through it so like I said it's going to be translucent and uh, you'll be able to see every little place that you touched up but it looks pretty bad right now to the point that it's clear. And whenever it's clear, you can't even tell what it's supposed to be. So we got to put something in there. So I've uh, picked out a couple colors here. I have a red that looks like it'll be a decent match to his belt, which just has a little tiny bit missing. There's also red over there, but it's still in great shape. Um, and then there's a little bit of red, like uh, the bows in her hair and uh, this girl's hair. But there's not all that much red on it. So I'm going to use that red to fix his belt, be real simple. And then I've got this. This is our famous Razzleberry. This is used on all kinds of freaking pinball play fields. But it's a little bit too purple and a little bit too light. I don't have anything that's a perfect match to that. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to mix in a little bit of red, which is a little bit too red. And hopefully we'll get something that's in the middle that will at least be pretty close to uh, his smock there. Um, which this whole part down here needs repainted. And then there's going to be a purple, and then there's like a teal that is his uh, pants, which is also her blouse. So that'll fix most of it. And then we've got to repaint her arm, which is like a, a cream color. So we've got the... If you look, they actually did interesting shadows. It's kind of hard to see, but there are two colors there. So there's like a tan... And then there's like a pink, like a pale peach color almost. And they used it, they silk screened it so well that it just, it creates shadows and stuff. If you see over here on her hand, the same thing's going on. That's actually two different colors. So it's really well done for such a simple little drawing, right? Okay, so I'm going to see what if I can get this anywhere close to the right color. And then we're just going to paint it on on the back. Okay, so I put just a little bit of red in, and then I mixed the Razzleberry and the red together. It wasn't quite dark enough, so I put a little bit of Alizaire Crimson in it, which just to darken it up. I'm just picking stuff at random that I have in my box, right? That got it pretty close. 
So I repaired his arm. Now with the lights off, it looks great. As soon as we light this up, it's not going to look so great. <laughs> right? Added in the missing down there with the lights off looks pretty good. And I've done about the top half here. You know, so it looks good until you light it up. There's no way really to do it where it looks good lit up. It'll look okay, but it'll all of this area will be darker. The only way to really do it would be to take off the entire area uh, that's messed up. To cut it off with like a razor blade or something. Uh, maybe triple thick it first, then cut all that out. Get it perfectly clean and then paint the lines back in that you just scraped off. And then spray the, the, the new color on. Alright folks. I think it came out okay. You know, the problem's always when you light it up, you can tell. So, you know, like I said, you can see every little spot, but it looks better than it did, you know. I got an almost perfect match on that teal. Half of her, uh, bu 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 her, bu her, bu her, uh, uh, her, 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 her bodice was already painted one color, and then the uh, the bottom, the fun part, I added in, and it ended up looking exactly the same. And the white is a pretty good match, but you know that's nothing to brag about. There, you know, <laughs> um. The purple is a pretty good match. I basically I nailed the color match. I mean the color match. It's dead on. It's just if you do it by hand, you can see all these little spots. So like I was saying, if you were to scratch off the paint and then airbrush it back in, that would give you the best look. But you know, it's never going to look exactly like the rest of it. It's just when you do this, you see all of the paint strokes. But it is what it is. And I kind of butchered this over here. That was about as good as I could get it. Folks, I'm not trying to make it look brand new again. I'm just trying to make it look presentable. And it looks a lot better now. It doesn't look like it's the paint's falling off of it. And the best part is, let me show you the best part. When it's turned off, it looks a lot better. You know. And most of the time, the game's turned off. So, And when you're playing it, so you turned it on, you can't look at the back. You're looking down here. At best, you're looking up there at the score. So, I mean, you know. Considering what we had to, to deal with, I think you all agree, 100% of you, there will be no negative comments, uh, that we did the best that we could. <laughs> so I have made a little list of stuff that is broke on this game. It's broke. You would not believe what's making all that noise over there. Somebody traded in some arcade one-ups. Oh. oh, man, we tried to stay away from them for so long, but there's so many of them out there now, you got to end up with one or two every once in a while. So we have some fake arcade games making that noise. So here's stuff we got to do. This is a drawing of me one of our great viewers made. You can see the little rat coming out of it. That's accurate. Um, you can see the little cogs and stuff. And there's my multimeter. And you can see the little stepper units inside. This is all pretty good. This is well drawn here. That guy looks just like me too. Everybody always wonders what I look like. That's exactly what I look like right there. I'm kind of like that with like some Brad Pitt mixed in and Leonardo DiCaprio and Clint Eastwood. Okay, stuff we got to do. This is all the stuff that's broke. Now, I wrote this in secret code that only I can read. I just do that for security reasons. The tens chime doesn't work. The hundreds chime doesn't work. The number five switch needs cleaned. The ones chime is intermittent. The flippers are dead. They will open, but they will not close. Remember, these are the movable flippers. The pop bumper coil is too weak. The second player 100 reel sticks at 9, and the two can play light is dead. Other than that, this thing works perfect. So the first one we'll do is the second player 100's reel is hanging at 9, I said. I decided that after I played it a little bit. 5, 6, 7, 8... Nine. It worked that time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, it's a little, little something going on there. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. There we go. Yeah, it hung that time. Okay, yeah, so that needs a little bit more work. So I'm going to take it apart and clean it again. And uh, basically make sure that shaft is really clean and everything seems snappy. And then we'll go from there. Sometimes it is... This little switch. So when it goes, the reason that it's hanging at nine is when this goes down, it has to press on that blade and that blade. So sometimes that one being like, for instance, so close is just giving it so much resistance, it's hard for it to do it. So I may get away with just adjusting that bottom switch or something, but we'll see if we can get it a little better. All right. So do you see the that, nine, that switch that closes on 9, the one that's all the way to the right here, all the way over there. Okay, so see how there is an air gap right now. These two, if I can get my finger in there somewhere, are supposed to be closed, and they are. Right? See how when I move them, the small blade is moving too? That's because they're, the spring is holding them together. They're, the spring steel of the switch is holding them together. That's how it should be. It's properly adjusted. Okay, but see how I also adjusted this blade to where before it was touching this cam, this actuator, but now it's farther down. Now, why, like I said, basically that's going to allow this to travel more before it has to push that. Before when that was bent up to where it was touching it, it had to push it farther, and that, like I said, that thing is a spring. It's a spring steel blade, basically. Or it acts like a spring. I don't know if that's the technical term, but it's the one I like to use. So because of that, it's going to work much better now because it just doesn't have as much springiness fighting it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, easy peasy, zero. So I'll show you down here cam action two three four five six seven eight now watch nine easy zero easy and then it rides like that so just a little bit of adjustment i didn't take this off just a little bit of adjustment to those switches sometimes can fix stuff like that so that reset well after i did that now the two can play light. So I have a two player game started right now. The two can play light should be on. The one can play light was working fine. That basically tells you how many players are in this current game. If you notice on this game, for whatever reason, they do not turn off the, the score lights um, for the players that are not playing. So there's a one up light lit. We've got all the lights on in the room here. When you go over to the two player, this lights up. And then three, four, of course. Uh, that tells you who's up, but this tells you how many people are actually playing in the game right now. Um, and they did various things. Some of the companies would reset that to where it said four at the end of each game, um, but they all kind of were used the same way during gameplay. So that light should be lit up right now. It's this light right here. I've messed with the light bulb and I've messed with the back of the socket. Uh, it, it's not coming on ever. And there is what looks like a yellow and gray wire going to it. What color would you say that is? Maybe yellow and green? Or is it yellow and blue? Or is this a white that has faded kind of yellowish? Here's the, this is another little game that we play whenever we work on these. Let me show you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> uh, what is this? Are all of those yellow, or did they all fade? Well, you can see down here, I think they all faded. I think down here they're all white. Up here they're all yellow, so I don't know. So it looks like maybe yellow and gray wire, but luckily we have the schematics, so let's whip those out and see what's going on with those. So hopefully this is an easy one. See, the one can play, two can play, three can play, four can play lights. They all are selected by the coin unit, and the other ones work. So we must have a bad connection from here to here, because the connection from here to here looks fine, and from here to here looks fine. So this line must have a problem, or the rivet on the coin unit might be dirty, or that little finger on the coin unit isn't making good contact, so it's going to be something there, or 
the Jones plug, the coin unit is in the bottom of the cabinet, the light is in the top of the cabinet, so that yellow and green, which I guess we were right, the yellow and green wire has to run through a Jones plug to get from the bottom to the top. So anywhere along there would be a problem. I'm going to guess it's the finger on the coin unit isn't touching, lining up perfectly, or it's uh, the rivet is still dirty or something like that. So that is the coin unit, and that top little finger is actually working just fine. Uh, and when you move it, there was no difference. However, stuff like these Jones plugs, they're not on the schematics. There's nothing telling you where the wire goes. You just have to know, like, hey, the light bulb's up here, or the coin unit's down there. There must be a wire connecting them, right? But they don't actually show you the Jones plug. But if you look, it's this wire. And so then if you pull on the wire a little bit, this is like the only way to do it. <laughs> it is actually making this wire move. So that's the other side of the wire. So that is connected to there, which is connected to there. And that runs down to the, to the uh, coin unit. So this kind of stuff takes a while to track down. So wiggling the connector a little bit made the light start working. So it's just a bad connection on the Jones plug. But that means we can cross it off the list. Okay, so this says tens chime doesn't work and hundreds chime doesn't work. I wrote chime, but on this one it's actually a bell. And on the games that had a bell, usually the ten and the hundred went to the same bell. So on this particular one it says large bell the 10 point relay and the 100 point relay both ring the large bell. So are we going to have a misadjusted thing on the 10 point relay and a misadjusted thing on the 100 point relay? Probably not. It's probably something to do with the wiring to the be this freaking phone. What are they doing to me? All right, I actually noticed this when we were working in here before, but I forgot to mess with it. So here is the bell back here. Now notice that it's you can unplug it. Okay. So there's the bell up there, but if you look, you can't see the plunger. Look, it's not down below it. It must be stuck or something. Like all of that needs work on. We got some serious. We got some serious plunger problems going on back there. So that probably needs a new sleeve at a minimum. And all of that just needs work through to get that to work properly. So what you have here is two of the wires are unhooked. Why is that? It's because the knocker would have been back there too. It's missing out of the cabinet. Um, and this thing, the plunger's there, part of it, but it's missing part of it as well. There's a little nylon piece that's supposed to be on it. So the way it was working, it was just kind of barely working. If at all, I don't know. We heard it, didn't we? Or did I, I, no, I had wrote down, does not work. So maybe we didn't hear it at all. So I'm gonna take this apart. It looks like the coil's probably still fine. The, the, the reason that these burn up is because, let's say that the 100, let's say that there is a 10 point switch on the play field. If that 10 point switch gets stuck closed, like it's adjusted too close or whatever. And there's other ways too, but if that, let's say that gets stuck closed, well that causes you all kinds of problems. That will turn on the 10 point relay, which will stay on. That will turn on the 10 point score reel, which will stay on. Sometimes that will turn on like a bonus unit, which will stay on. Uh, and that will turn on the coil or the, 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 chi the bell, which will stay on. So all of those coils will overheat at the same time just because one switch is stuck. Uh, the way some of it's uh, wired up is they latch on. So at the end of the, like whenever the 10 point coil, the 10 point score reel pulls in, it opens a switch. The purpose of that switch is to turn off the relay. But if that switch is misadjusted, then what happens is you hit a 10 point uh, score 
it pulls in the 10 point relay which stays on locks itself on through another switch on itself the score reel pulls in but doesn't open that switch and it stays like it the relay stays on which means the bonus unit stays on and the bell coil stays on and you know people are playing it they don't know how the things work they just hear something going and they don't realize what's going on or care and it's burning up coils because of one little misadjusted switch that's kind of the that's kind of the weak point of em pinball machines they're so well designed but if a, if a switch gets out of adjustment it can cause a lot of trouble so let's see if I can clean this thing up a little bit. I don't have the little bumper that goes in there. There's supposed to be a little rubber grommet that sits in there. Um, I was just, I don't think I've got anything like that. So I'll put a little piece of foam there. The, the purpose of it is so that whenever the little plunger falls back down, this mounts like this. Whenever the plunger falls back, it doesn't make that clack that you just heard. It, you don't hear the sound because it lands on a piece of rubber. So, but let me see if I can straighten this up a little bit. All right, so I put a new sleeve in it. And uh, I put a little piece of <laughs> beer seal on the bottom that will cushion the blow nicely, I believe. Uh, I, I was going to solder the wire up there instead of there, but unfortunately they cut it and then it wasn't long enough. So that's why they have that splice in there. I don't know why they did that. So I put some new tape on it. And then the plunger. I actually have a new one. You can probably buy just this nylon insert. So I'll save this just in case you know you can next time I see one at a, on a website or something that where I'm ordering parts. I'll get some of those coming because you see this from time to time that missing. But uh, the little plunger is just four or five dollars. So let's see if it passes the the thump test. Oh yeah! Oh, that was much better. <laughs> so now it's gonna go ding. So that should fix our bell. All right, we have it back in there. We'll test it here in a bit. Now I want to talk about something else. This will be curious. So notice there are the two wires cut loose for the knocker, and the knocker is missing. So that's the only thing that has been removed from this game. Now, every time I make a video about a pinball machine, somebody says, did the knocker work? Or they say, my favorite part was the knocker. Or if I say, and the knocker is working, they'll say, you didn't show us that the knocker, are you sure the knocker works? I mean, I didn't hear the knocker. I don't, I'm not so sure that you fixed the knocker. Okay, so because we all know that the knocker is the best part of the pinball machine. One of my favorite things is whenever we sell this game, you know, to a casual pinball player for their home, and they call us the next day and say that it's broken, that it keeps making a loud cracking sound, like something's breaking in half, uh, every couple games that they play, right? So I like that part of the knocker. And then, um, so here's here's my question. The knocker has been removed from this game. Since we all know it's the best part of the game, why did they remove the knocker? I mean, they didn't just cut the wire or anything. They completely removed it from the game. No more knocker. Why is that? I want you to tell us down below... What insidious reason you believe they removed the knocker for? Okay, so let's hit this and see if the see if the uh, hundreds chime works now. Oh yeah, boy, that's great. <laughs> let's see if the tens chime works. Boy, that's a good sound. Let's see if it gets old. Oh wait a minute, that's going to mess that up. It sounds great, folks. Okay, and then I had written down that the one was intermittent. So let's see if the one is intermittent. One sounds fine. Now, if you want to know how they're making the one sound, this is the bonus unit, or I think the bonus unit. The match unit, I'm sorry, the match unit. 
Every time you score one point, it advances this, which makes this. <laughs> Hit that bell. We'll call it the wagger. The wagger hits the bell. So I'm going to hit the one point again so you can see the wagger in action. Very cool. So that's not intermittent at all. I must have been hearing something. Um, okay, so let's mark that off our list. Okay, so it says number five switch needs cleaned. Basically, there's a switch on the play field. Whenever you roll over it, sometimes it gives you a point. Sometimes it gives you two or three points. So that's acting up a little bit but here's the interesting ones the flippers are dead both of them huh that's weird the flippers will open but will not close so on this game the flippers move just like the uh, zipper flippers but this is the Williams version they called it flipper closing action so they will open up but they won't close and then the pop bumper coil is too weak the one on the right. So this is an interesting one. I went through a lot of, remember I changed the flipper coils and I made sure I wired them right. 28400 is the small wire. 21375 is the, is the bigger wire. 21 gauge is bigger than 28 gauge. I checked and checked and checked. I definitely wired them right. Now, we'll check again if we don't figure it out quick, but I definitely wired them right. But it's not just the flippers that don't work. So both flippers will not work. They will open up, but they won't close. Well, there is a, there is a uh, way that that happens. Let me see if I can find it on here. So there is a flipper unit trip. I believe that's what opens it back up. And then there is a flipper unit latch. That's not working. Well, that's interesting. And then one of the pop bumpers, the thumper bumper, the right top thumper bumper isn't working right. Okay, however, the flippers will open. So the trip opens it. And I will say, if you hit the flippers, they, they try to work. Right, and if you hit that that top thumper bumper, it tries to work, but it just can't do it. Okay, so we can exclude the pop bumper from it. The pop bumper was because the pop bumper relay just wasn't adjusted well enough. So the pop bumper is working fine now. Let me show you a new one that I have never seen before that we're going to add to the list. All you old timers can explain this to me. Look what they've done here. So we always raise up the back, leg, the back legs on the machine a little bit, just to give it a little more incline, make it a little more modern, you know. Look what they've done here. One of the things you run into whenever you do that is that this tilt bob doesn't quite hang right because it's not level, it's, it's past level. You know, you've kicked it up a little bit. But look, look at this. They have bent the bracket to make the tilt hang closer to the front of the hole, thereby making it easier to tilt, which you could do anyways by just raising that bob on the bottom. That's a weird one. Haven't seen that one yet. So I'm going to bend that back a little bit so that it's centered in the hole to make it a little less easy to tilt. What do you think about that? And I did it with my channel lock pliers that Dr. Detroit was nice enough to send me as a Christmas present. Thank you, Dr. Detroit. <laughs> flip, flip, flip. Flip, flip, flip. Okay, so this is the mechanism that opens and closes. So this big coil in the middle needs to close to, to pull in to get the flippers to come together. Right now they are in their regular position. So the way that works is you hit this switch over here. And see how that is green? Right now that says closes. So if I hit that switch, 
They're out of clothes. Let's see if it even dries. Oh, it's opening. You see what's going on? It's opening. Huh. Okay. Let me see if I can get it to go the other way. Um. See, look, closes is lit. Opens is not lit on both sides. Hmm. Interesting. So those are controlled by the flipper unit into stroke switch. Now it doesn't say flipper into stroke switch. It says flipper unit. That's the whole thing. So if that switch is closed, it will light up the two G target lights, green. And if it is flipped the other way, it will light up the two red target lights. So basically, depending on which position the flipper unit is in, it will either say close or open. Um, so we may have something misadjusted there. There's a red and white wire, a red and brown wire, and then this is the yellow. Aha! Another one for Sherlock Holmes. So the uh, now it is on the closes, because I pulled the thing in. So if it's closed, if you hit it now, it should open it. Open is lit, closed is not lit. So if I hit the switch now, it opens it and turns it back to the closes light. But if you hit it when the closes light is on, it also opens it. Now I know what's going on. It's not, uh, it's not that switch for the light. There must be another switch that toggles back and forth between this or that getting power. So you may wonder, well, how do you find stuff like that? Well, you just look at what you know, like the flipper unit trip. So a trip is always, if you pull it in, it makes something reset, right? Or it makes something turn off or whatever. Something like a spring goes into action, right? So the flipper unit trip is working every time. So how does it get power? Well, the left and right target switches, that's what we keep hitting. So whenever you press those, if the flipper unit into stroke switch is that way, it trips the flipper unit. That pulls in, that pulls out the flippers, which probably should reset that switch over to here. And then the next time you hit the switch, power goes through here, it comes down here and turns on the target relay. The flipper latch, which must be what holds it in, pulls it in, happens because of the target relay. Uh, now why they make that more complex, I don't know. Probably something to do with scoring or something, or making the score motor turn or something. right? Um, so it looks like there is a flipper unit end of stroke switch that's not changing, because it's always on that one, and every time we hit those stand-up switches, it pulls in the trip, and it never pulls in the latch which means this must always be connected and it's never connecting down here. So we need to find another one on that same unit that's blue and white that runs into a red and black and a blue and brown. All right, so it is the second set of switches on this side. You can't even hardly see it, but it's all mangled up in there. All of that ain't right. All of those are bent way out of the way. So I got to get those straight. See how, they're, see how the blades are all bent, crooked? They're not supposed to be like that. So I need to get that right and that should fix it. Alright, so that's properly adjusted, so it should work now. So basically this little arm, whenever they pull in, because this blade is touching that little blade it is it is able to send power to here okay when it when it pulls in whenever you hit that target it throws them all and now because this blade is touching this blade it allows the the release to have power before those two were smashed together because this one was bent down so far it was holding them all down but now it should work back and forth uh, the way it's supposed to and the other one is adjusted properly as well. All right, so the pop bumpers. 
that one needs work. Now all work. I'm watching you. This one's questionable, but they all seem to work. Okay, the pop bumpers seem to all work. The chimes are all working. And the flippers are closing. However, the flippers won't do a freaking thing. They were working. You saw they were working a little bit. We've got some kind of bad connection, maybe, on a Jones plug. They're working with the playfield up in the air, but they don't work with the playfield down. Might be the Jones plug. You know, whenever you move it, wires move, you know. Um, so this says opens. Now it says closes. Look at that. Magical. <laughs> Some people hate zipper flippers. I love them. I think they're cool. Okay, so let me see. Let me mess with the... Because uh, there is a connection from the... From the the uh, button all the way up onto the play field. So let me see if something's not quite right there. Okay, so next theory. I hooked these up just like this. However, what if they're just writing the name of the coil there and that's not actually how they hook up? Like for instance, this is an M291100. I'm assuming that this coil is 21375 and this is 28400, but that's also the way they name it. So it could be that I've got them completely hooked up wrong. Um, it kind of seems like I do, like I've got them backwards. Because, one, there's a wire that's stretched a little weird, but the way these work is whenever you hit the button and the thing is all the way down, there are two windings on the coil. One of them, while the flipper is down, or in either position on these zipper, these movable flippers, but while the flipper is not flipped, this switch is closed. The purpose of that is to short out one of the coils. So that what happens is you send power through, it comes through this, and then only uses this coil, which the way I have it wired is the weaker of the coils. It should be the stronger of the coils. Okay, and then once you, uh, once the flipper goes up, it opens this switch, which throws this coil back into play too, and now the power has to go through both of them. So right now I've got it where the weaker of the two windings, the one with the smallest wire and the more turns, is all that's in play whenever you uh, flip it. If I were to reverse these, even though they're written like this, then I would have the stronger winding here, which would go wham! And then once it did, it would add in the weaker winding as well, which would make the whole thing have more resistance. And that they do that so that you can hold the button in. So yeah, now that I look at it, I think they're backwards. And I, I went way out of my way to wire them just like this, but the way they have written that in there is complete nonsense. So here's how I'm going to prove it. I'm going to go find another one, another schematic that shows that it's nonsense. They probably fixed it at some point. All right, so there are only four Williams games with zipper flippers. There's Doozy, da uh, Doozy Daisy, Hayburners, and Student Prince. Uh, and all of them have the same, the schematics written the same way. But our, our situation isn't really a... Uh, just on the zipper flippers. I mean, all the flippers would be the same way. So if you look at, let me see if I've got the, yeah, so here's the hay burners. This was also a zipper flipper. You can see by the, it was the last one they did. And you can see by the time they did this one, they were writing the number of the flipper coil, which is a little bit different, over to the right instead of writing it inside the coil where it makes it look like that's how it wires up. And then if you look at this Expo, from about a year later. This is just somebody's picture. You can clearly see it's the same coils as I'm using. Uh, 21, 375, 28, 400. So this is the exact same coil. And the way they have it wired on this regular game, this is the small wire and that's the small wire. That's the large wire and that's the large wire. They have the end of stroke switch clearly connecting the two small wires together. 
So I'm going to I'm going to throw the flag on this one. This is not my fault. This is clearly Williams fault from 1960 whatever the heck. I was right they were wrong. All right. I think we might have it. Now, we still got a lot to do to it, but I can't film everything, people. It's going on forever. Let's see if we can let's see if we can get one of the uh, one of those one of those buttons up there that uh, closes the flippers. Oh, I missed. I thought I had it too. I'll tell you this, for whatever reason, and some of you uh, guys that are all into these might agree with me, these ones with the zipper flippers, the flippers, the two inch flippers on them seem stronger than the two inch flippers on the regular ones. I don't know why that is. You wouldn't know it from that, but... <laughs> oh, missed again. You can get it up to the pop bumpers again with it. Do we agree that top left bumper is fine? These EM videos, unfortunately, I think we're a dying breed. They don't get as many views. People just, they're not as interested in them. Especially if I do several uh, repair videos. By the time we get to that last video, just nobody's watching anymore. It's just not interesting to a lot of people. Which sucks, because it's my favorite ones to do. But, what can you do? Well, if I can hit the freaking target. Damn it, get it. So I could do a whole other video where we do all the rules and I could do a whole other, you know, where we uh, replace the, we replace the, um, the links on the flippers and we figure out why it's doing that and we, uh, we uh, uh, adjust this so that it kicks a little better. And uh, we figure out why the gate doesn't go quite all the way down. It's a little bit too high. You get, you know, you can just keep doing videos on one machine forever, but people get tired of it. And I know some of you don't. But the numbers don't lie, folks. One. If I could hit the freaking target. <laughs> that was a whole freaking game, man. So what's going on there is it's trying to reset something. And it 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 happens at the end of each ball. So it's not in the re in the startup sequence, the reset sequence. It's in the the ball in play sequence.
come on. <laughs> we got it for a minute there. I got about one day left to work on this, and it'll be pretty nice. Needs a little bit more. Come on, you sucker. Come on. Oh, come on. I was robbed. I had my little short flippers all ready to go. There was no way the ball could get by. Now we got them. <laughs> now what? Oh, that's right. We're going to beat up the banks. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Always remember, people, when you when you get a preferable playfield situation, it's time to beat up the banks. Oh, and there you go. I like it. Cool game. This would make it into my collection. Student prints. We've been working on it a long time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And hey, folks, you want to know how you can help our channel? There is a link down below the videos to Amazon. If you have anything you're going to buy on Amazon, if you click our link before you buy it, it gives us money. Thank you. We appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Uh, so uh, we don't want anybody to buy anything, though, that they that they ooh, that they are not planning on buying. You know what I mean? We, we're trying to make all of our videos free. So that's why we don't do Patreon we might in the future. I don't know. It's tempting. But I hate the idea that I'm going to have a video that you got to pay money to see. What if you're poor? See, there's the problem. What if you're poor? Now, I don't want to be poor. I'm not poor, to be honest with you. But uh, we come from humble means. We weren't really dirt poor or anything. But, you know, we, we, we came from humble means. So I don't want to make videos that people have to pay to watch. And if you don't have any money, well, then tough luck. I don't like that. But if you want to help us out, that's one way you can. You can uh, buy your uh, items on Amazon by using our link down below. It sends us money. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. We will see you on the next video.